What'd you pick? Can I see? Tomatoes from the garden? Ooh, are those tomatoes? Oh, thank you. Yum, we're gonna have to put them on our salad tonight. Hey. Whenever you're ready. Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest, and today we are talking all things sprouts and sprouting. So we've got our lovely planter garden here in our backyard, and a common question or complaint we get is, what if I don't have the space or the knowledge for starting my own garden, what can I do? And I'm here to tell you that you can actually grow a garden on your countertop without soil in a minimum of two or three days. So sprouting is cost effective, space effective, nutrient dense, saves on water, what is not to love? Dusty and I have dabbled in sprouting over the years, but we recently had a massive resurgence in interest thanks to Doug Evans, who is seriously the sprouting master. He has a brand new sprouting book out and we are here because we interviewed him today. I'm not the expert, <laughs> Dusty's not the expert, but Doug Evans most definitely is. All I can say is that he inspired us to start sprouting in our own kitchen, growing a garden on our countertops because it is so nutritious, delicious, cost effective. I mean, you can take literally a tablespoon of seeds and turn them into cups upon cups of nutrient dense sprouts. Not only to garnish salads, but to make entire meals out of. They're so much more nutrient dense and protein dense than you could ever imagine. 84% is deficient or depleted in micronutrients and phytonutrients and fiber. That you can grow your own food yep. for under a dollar a serving and get proteins and get medium chain fatty acids and sure. get carbohydrates and get prebiotics and probiotics and vitamin C. So thanks to our abundance of newfound information from Doug Evans, coupled with our abundance of supply from Sproutman.com, we are sprouting masters in the making. <laughs> so big shout out to Sproutman.com for sponsoring this video. I recently got on their website after hearing about it from Doug Evans and I purchased their starter kit. So it's really important where you get your sprouting seeds from, and Doug talks a little bit more about that in depth and why. I'm probably fully stocked for at least the next couple of years, no joke. So if you guys are interested in getting your own arsenal of sprouting seeds, the best of the best, certified organic, non-GMO, tested and certified, then definitely check out sproutman.com. I will link them below in the description and you can use our discount code EATMOVEREST for a sweet deal. So definitely get started. My personal favorites are broccoli sprouts just because they are ridiculously nutrient dense and taste amazing. But check out the starter kit. I can't say enough great things about it. So what is sprouting and how do I do it at home? Sprouting is taking any seed or nut or grain or bean and soaking it in water to unleash its inner potential. So we find that the easiest way to sprout is simply to take a mason jar and put one to two tablespoons of whatever seed or bean into the jar along with filtered water. So you're gonna wanna soak those for about eight to 10 hours. Usually I just say to do it overnight before you go to bed. And then in the morning you will drain them rinse, drain, rinse, drain, I say maybe three to five times, and then you'll want to turn the jar upside down and let that excess liquid drain out at a 45 degree angle so that the sprouts aren't oversaturated with water. So you'll do that probably two to three times a day or think every four or five hours, drain and rinse, drain and rinse, and let them soak and then you're going to do that three to four days and you will have a sprout. So you can let the sprouts grow as long as you want, but three to four days is probably about how long I like to go with them. And then I will store them in the refrigerator. Usually I'll give them one last rinse and set them upside down for a few minutes. I will pop them inside a Tupperware that's lined with a paper towel and lightly close the lid with a little bit of breathing room to go for airflow to flow in and out. And I top them on my salads. Usually when I take them out of the refrigerator, I will give them a quick, quick rinse and then put them on my salads. So we have tons of different sprouts that we're putting on our salads. So like I said, not just the garnish, but almost as the salad itself. And they taste amazing, they're nutrient dense, like we said before, cost effective. So 
definitely give them a try and try to consume them, I would say, within three to four days once they go to the refrigeration phase, just to make sure that they're the freshest possible. I recommend using sprouting jars. You can also use a bag or a tray, but we like to go with the jars most of the time so we can see our sprouts. So this is a breathable hemp sprouting bag, so you can just put the seeds in there and soak and drain and rinse. It's breathable all the way around, which is one benefit, but I don't love that you can't see them inside of it but it's still a great option. So this is step one. This is simply the soaking phase. I've got lentils soaking. They have not yet started to sprout. After the overnight soaking of eight to 10 hours, then this is the sprouting phase. So I've got this mesh strainer and I've got them tilted upside down at a 45 degree angle to drain off excess liquid. And you can see that some of these alfalfa sprouts have actually started to sprout little tails. So I'll keep draining and rinsing every three to four hours and then do that three to four days. So I just grabbed these sprouts out of the refrigerator. This is a broccoli blend. And I literally started with one, maybe one and a half tablespoons of seeds, and it made probably about two to three cups worth of sprouts. So these are actually pea shoots or microgreens, which are even a step further than sprouts. They're just simply a little bit bigger and greener. So again, love the pea shoots, love the broccoli sprouts. You guys, this is such a simple process and you're really gonna love it. This is like the ultimate food hack. People are always asking, what's your favorite superfood? What's one thing that I can do that I can incorporate that will change my overall health? I would say sprouts. Again, with how nutrient dense they are, how easy they are to make, and how affordable they are, sprouts are it, for sure. So. Aaron and I are now gonna interview Doug Evans. Doug is the ultimate sprout guru. He's had restaurants, he's invented juice machines, he's done it all, and we're gonna interview him today and learn all about sprouting. We've got Doug Evans here, the, uh, the sprout man himself. We have followed you for years. We've heard you multiple times on on a few of our favorite podcasts. You've got a new book out. Maybe tell us more about yourself, who you are, and how you got started. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in New York City eating yeah. street food, junk food, processed food, and food um, was so scarce when I was growing up. That yeah. We used it as a reward system. Oh, wow. So yeah. I was totally fixated. And yeah. then, you know, when I turned 17, I joined the U.S. Army to learn discipline, to serve my country, yeah. and to save my money. And I really believe that when I went into the military, I wanted to get discipline, and I wanted to, to do the Army College Fund. Yeah. And after I got out of the Army, I was in the 82nd Airborne, mm -hmm. I was no longer fit for any sort of academia, classroom, being sure. indoors. Sure. And the Army set me up um, with a lot of information and a lot of energy and i was healthy but i was what they say healthy on the outside but not healthy on the inside right yeah we know about and, that <laughs> yeah yeah and so i i started to obsessively work so yeah. i was doing anything i could to make money because i wanted to be able to you know have a family and live a healthy life yeah. and so i worked and the closest thing that I could find that I was passionate about was graphic design. So I made this, this journey from graphic design to computer graphics and then to digital printing. And then in my early 30s, my aunt got diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I had to, and there was no Google. I didn't know what diabetes was. Right. But then the next thing I knew, they chopped off her feet below her ankles. Oh, no. And then my uncle got heart disease and then he died. Yeah. And then my mother got stomach cancer and then she died. And then my father got heart disease and he died. And then my brother had the first of three strokes and a heart attack. Oh, so wow. I could keep going about yeah. the exposure to chronic illness yeah. that I was presented to. But for me, I thought that I was genetically cursed. Like right. it was a real issue that I was going to die and that life didn't matter. And yeah. by that time, I had made enough money that I could be nice and fat and sick. Right. So I was 30, <laughs> yeah. right? I was 36 pounds overweight. Yeah. I was sluggish. I was eating a lot of junk food and processed food. And then they say when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Right. I met a woman who was a vegan. 
I had never heard the term vegan before. I thought it was like slang or short for vegetarian. Right. And so, and you know, she was very kind, non-judgmental, and her sister had died of leukemia. Her mother died of cancer, mm -hmm. and we really connected on on the level. And she became my first exposure to the lifestyle. Yeah. And in a two-week period, we went from vegetarian. I went from junk food, processed food, to vegetarian, to vegan, to raw food vegan in a two-week period, including wow. including like slipping in a juice fast wow. along That's the awesome. way, a three-day juice fast, yeah. which I only now remember that I did that because I didn't even remember back yeah. then. That's you know, a lot quicker all... than we did it. It took us probably a solid year or so. <laughs> oh, yeah. It took me two years to go to even go vegan. So, boy, you, you're setting some land speed records there. For uh... <laughs> And yeah. I remember hearing a talk by an early raw food guy, Paul Nissan, at the Big Apple Vegetarian Center yeah. talking about, you know, the raw food diet. And I literally thought, like, there was no way. It didn't make yeah. sense. And yeah. then I read you know, early books by David Wolf and Gabriel Cousins. Yeah. And these people, I was like, wow, they can do it. This seems like it makes sense. The way I did it was I found my favorite foods, right? I loved watermelon. I loved grapes. I loved cherries. I loved carrots. And I would just eat yeah. um, as much as the food that I wanted until I was no longer hungry or right. was full. Right. And, and it was literally almost like 12 step recovery yeah. that I looked at the other food as literally um, detrimental to my health. Oh, and, right. and, and I had this philosophy that everything I put in my mouth was a life or death decision. My partner, my business partner at the time, Denise, we set up a little cooperative like setup, a community setup in our loft in Chinatown. Yeah. And we said, okay, well, you know, we can't have people ringing our doorbell at 10 o'clock at night. Like yeah. let's, I think New York City is ready. So yeah. we opened up our first little lifestyle company called Organic Avenue yep. in New York City in 2000, early 2000s. We did cold pressed organic juices in glass bottles. Right. We, we didn't use sweeteners like agave. We would make our own date paste. We would make our own ferments. We yeah. would sprout our own. And this this grew. Was this doing very well in New York City? Were you making money? Were you able to survive? How expensive <laughs> was this to do it so well? I mean, for 10 years, I look back. Yeah. We opened up 10 stores yeah. all over Manhattan. Yeah. We were paying rent in one of our stores, $25,000 a month. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Wow. And there was all sorts of insurance and liabilities and workers' comp and disability and unemployment and um, fees and taxes and permits. Right. So it, it, I look back and say for 10 years, we subsidized New York City wow. to have raw, organic, vegan food. And like that's what we did. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So tell me then, when and how did Sprouts become the thing? For you, I mean, you were sprouting, you were juicing, you were doing these things, but but now you, again, your new book is out. Tell me why sprouts. So so I moved to the Mojave Desert yeah. to a little town east of Joshua Tree. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the desert, and you know I have a nice setup. You know I'm in my yurt office right yep. now, and we have hot springs on the land, oh, wow. and we have palm trees and you know, we have fig trees and date trees and mulberry trees, oh, but man. we had we had to plant them or transplant them. Sure. So when I moved here, the realization was not only am I in the desert, I'm in a food desert. Right. Yeah. What am I going to eat? Right. Right. I'm not going to eat the little cottontail bunny rabbits running around or oh, the lizards you. or rattlesnakes. Yeah. So I was like, what am I going to eat? Right. And then in my 20 plus year raw vegan journey, I always knew about sprouts. I would always eat sprouts whenever I saw, like if I went to a good health food store and yeah. they had the crunchy sprouts and the pea shoots and the sunflower sprouts, and the, yeah. um, I just like buy them 
and that would be like my on the go meal. Sure. Uh-huh. When I came here, I was like, okay, I'm just going to sprout. Yeah. I'm just going to start sprouting because I did not want to be in the car three hours a day going back and forth to Whole Foods and Palm Springs. No, right? No. Made no sense. And within one month, 50% of my calories, 50% yeah. of the volume I was consuming were sprouts that I was growing in one cubic foot right. um, on the countertop. It's right. just crazy. I mean, most it, people just see them as like a little garnish on their salad or sub sandwich. Right. But you're oh, making meals out of sprouts. I was making meals. I was making snacks. I was making salads. I was making entrees. I was feeding other people. Wow. Um, I was feeding my cleaning staff with yeah. it. Yeah. Before I wanted to spread the gospel, yeah. I wanted to do some research. Right. Yeah. And I was exposed to literally hundreds of white papers, peer-reviewed, double-blind, placebo-tested studies. And the more I researched about sprouts, Mm -hmm. the more I was convinced unequivocally Mm -hmm. that sprouts solved so many issues. And I I was dumbfounded and I couldn't believe that everyone wasn't sprouting. Like, why why weren't sprouts like this, the topic, because they require the least amount of water. Oh, yeah. Um, right. And, you know, right. we get a lot of people who say, well, I don't have room for a garden. And it's like anyone can grow this garden on their countertop, you know, in a high rise. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so I, I intellectualized this and then I started to take action. Yeah. And then um, I went through seeing, could I get, what could I get out of the sprouts? And so then I said, look, I never, you know, went to college. I never wrote essays, but I said there, and I looked at the books that were on Amazon. I bought a bunch of the books and I was like, these are all old school. We are in the age of the internet. We're in the age of advanced communication. So I went to New York. I pitched a publisher, one publisher. And I said, look, I really want to write this book on sprouts. And I want to do how to sprout, why to sprout what to sprout, yep. and then what to do with the sprouts. And then because I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist, I'm going to interview these doctors. And sure. so I made a punch list. And literally, I got Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Joel Kahn, Dr. Mercola, Dr. Oz, Dr. Axe. Right? Right. And some of these people, the interesting thing is, some of these people were not even plant-based. Right. right? It was interesting that what what the common thread that pulled all these people together is they all love sprouts. Oh, right. They all love sprouts, love and them. and and that just gave me even more, you know, fire in the belly that oh, this yeah. information needed to come out there. And so then I set up the sprout lab where I started to sprout using jars, using trays, using bags, sure. using soil, using right. alternative sprout mediums, and. I started to order every organic seed I could get. And I started to take notes and that became the essence of the book. And then I collaborated with Lita Scheintaub who Mm -hmm. did Oprah's recipe book and Layla Ali's recipe book and and cut a deal with her to do the recipes for our book. Yeah, we're gonna have to dive into those recipes because that's just next level. You know, Aaron and I, again, we we've been on this plant-based journey for since we've been married probably about seven years now and when we have new people coming to this diet to this lifestyle not only are they overwhelmed by the amount of food that we eat the amount of raw food but now when when we're starting to mention sprouts their head really starts to spin so i think your book and having recipes is going to be is so crucial to actually making it accessible for people right I mean, I was really surprised that my book, it's been out since April 7th, yeah. so the beginning, the beginning of you know, this pandemic. Sure. It's now in its third printing oh, already. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, um, and my entire book tour was canceled. Sure. Right? We were supposed to have a, a launch party in yeah. New York City and Union Square with yeah. Chef Jean George, and that got moved into a live. Yeah. And so... So the fact that the, the book 
is sprouting and growing and blossoming and replicating is not about me. It's about the message right? Right. that, that you can grow your own food yep. for under a dollar a serving yep. and control it and get proteins and get medium chain fatty acids and sure. get carbohydrates and get prebiotics and probiotics and vitamin C. And, and, you know, for your viewers that may be unfamiliar yeah. with sprouting, I'll yeah. give it like an example. Sure. You know, if you were to take, like, I think it's pretty well known yeah. that vegetables are good for you, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. 84% of America is not getting the amount of recommended servings right. of fruits and vegetables. So we have a, a population majority, yeah. vast majority, 84% is deficient or depleted in micronutrients and phytonutrients and fiber. So this yeah. question about where are you getting your protein from is yeah. a ridiculous question because we're over proteined. Yep. The question should be where are you getting your fiber from? Oh, and okay. so with that knowledge, right? So there's, there's general information that says vegetables are good for you. Let's just take one vegetable, a lentil. Yep. So lentils are good for you. They're a staple of diets around the world. People yep. like lentils. We yep. love them. The di right? Almost. The difference <laughs> between like a, a, a cooked lentil and a raw lentil yep. is that when you sprout the lentil, yep. you, it doubles in volume. Right, so it's just a bonus. You get yeah. twice as much. Right. Uh -huh. the, the second thing, it is enzymatically alive, yeah. right? So the enzymes, the life force inside, they're still growing. It is alive. Uh -huh. And when you sprout that because it's alive, you end up tripling the vitamin C. Oh, wow. It's like all of a sudden, the, the lentil, when you sprout it on like the second or third day, you are tripling the vitamin C. That's one That's thing incredible. I was one I was curious about because I also was thinking about like chia and flax seeds and how you get you put those in your smoothies for your healthy omega three fatty acids. So does that hold true when you sprout them? Are they hundred percent? Yeah, when when you sprout chia, yeah, you make it more bioavailable. You wow. increase the fiber. Yeah. You increase the soluble and insoluble fiber, sure. and as it grows the chia will turn green, which yep. it means it's going through photosynthesis. So you're actually creating the antioxidant of, of, of chlorophyll, sure. you know, in the, in the sprouted chia. So yep. sprouting. Does the fat content change then as it sprouts? The or? fat, the, 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 the interesting thing is the amount of fat that's in there is almost finite. So sure. as the sprout grows, you're going to get more fiber. You're going to get more vitamin C. You'll yep. get more antioxidants. You're not going to get more fat yeah. because it, especially the, the magical thing about sprouts yeah. is that they contain within them the intelligence to go from a, a, a dormant plant organism right. into a active germinating live organism yeah. but there's certain things that do not increase so when we talk about like the anti-cancer compound glucoraphanin the precursor to sulforaphane yeah. uh -huh. every seed has a finite amount yeah. so when they say that um broccoli sprouts have 50 to 100 times the amount of sulforaphane of mature broccoli sure. that's because as the broccoli gets bigger, you're getting more fiber, you're right. getting more of the other things, but you're not going to get more of the glucoraphanin. Oh, I don't believe that you're going to get more fat in that period. The, the fats and other parts develop in the plant journey. Once yeah. you get in the ground, once it gets fertilizer, um, and it, it grows into a mature vegetable. Sure. So the insight, if we were to pull back, and this is an insight, you know, at one point in time, seeds um, went into the ground yep. and turned into fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. but they took weeks or months or years, right? Uh -huh. Right, and there was no shortage of land 
or water or sun or yeah. even time. People right. had the time to properly garden and to farm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? So now where people are living in small confined you yeah. know, um, situations and they don't have soil, they don't have fertilizer, they don't have a green thumb, we've relegated and outsourced our food supply chain to big corporations that are providing us things that are most profitable for them, not the things that are most healthy. Right. People are very disconnected to their food. Totally. So, so my insight, which, which drove the book, which is driving the success of the book, is that seeds were intended to grow into mature plants, fruits and vegetables in weeks and months and years. Yeah. But nature provided this option that yeah. made seeds edible and right. it made sprouts edible. Yeah. So when you take a seed, um, it's edible. Yeah. You take a seed and you sprout it, it becomes more bioavailable, more nutritious, right. more filled with these antioxidants, and yeah. it happens in days. Right. So here's the magical survival food, the desert food, the urban food, the yeah. food for everyone. It's that you get to eat sprouts, right? Right in days with minimal and effort and minimal time. Minimal time, yeah. Minimal and even water. from just a purely a digestive standpoint, we just did a video on bloating and indigestion. A lot yeah. of people wonder, you know, oh, I get gassy or bloating when I do like my grains and beans and yeah. even just purely for better digestion, soak them. And, you know, one step ahead of, above that would be sprouting them, right? Because right. they do have like that protective coating on them. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the phytic acid sure. and the anti-nutrition, which yeah. gets eliminated and uh, reduces because that, that, um, protective layer is designed to keep the seed kind of whole and ready to go until yeah. it's in an ideal state of germination. Right. Uh -huh. And then it's, then it's off to the races and it's ready to go. Yeah. I mean, you look at a bird poop lands on your shoulder and there's a whole intact <laughs> seed in there sometimes. Right. If that were to land in the ground, it could probably still be protected enough to sprout. Right. And, yeah. Right? And it's yeah. A lot. It's, it's someone once yeah, explained that process of these birds and these animals eating these seeds. They're protected through the digestive tract. They're pooped out and, and they sit in the ground there where, where until it rains, they have the perfect growing conditions. And like you said, that protective coating, that, that phytic acid, then has the fertilizer from the poop, the water. And, and this is how nature, I mean, it's crazy how this happens. Yeah. So, I, I mean, see, seeds want to sprout, yeah. right? As, as Michael Pollan wrote in The Botany of Desire, the first book that I ever had of his, it's like the, the apple is sweet so that people eat it so that the seeds can replicate. Like right. who's controlling who, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's very real, but there's so much about sprouts that, that people don't know. And, and if we were to back up, it's very easy. And when, we, when you take people into your kitchen, I don't think I'm gonna go in the kitchen with you. When, no. I could, but when you go in the kitchen, you look to sprout, you need a jar, you need yeah. some water, you yeah. could get a special fancy got screen. Yeah, so you got you got some jars. We haven't used the bag yet, but yeah, I, I like to see the seeds um, sprouting. Um, sure. But it's very very simple. And there's a chapter in my book called Junkyard Dog, yeah. where I sterilized all these items that would normally go into recycle, and yep. most people don't even realize recycling is really downcycling because. Right. Yeah. It's not really being used in the same category on um, the like, but I would take things and find everything I could to add seeds. And I felt like a magician. Right. Yeah. That you just, I was just like adding water, adding this, and, you know, almost like, you know, I'm juggling a hundred things. Yep. And it, I got into a groove yeah. where I was able to literally spend five minutes, um, 
you know, nurturing my six sprouting jars and my four trays yeah. um, and my terracotta potter for the chia seeds. And I was doing yeah. the nurturing like five minutes a day. Yeah. And I was getting, you know, a lot of dollars worth oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. of food. Sure. And, and then like the fun part is when you um, detoxify yeah. from added fat, added sugar, yeah. added salt. Right. right. So my diet, you know, is virtually eliminated salts, oils, yep. and sugars sure. that do not come from whole food plant-based. Right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, when you stop eating those things, which just mess with the brain, yep. right, the addictive behavior of the brain, yep. then all of a sudden, you're at a level of peace where, you know, I eat like sprouted pea shoots. They're like so sweet to me right. that that I end up eating like the whole bunch. Yeah, and yeah it kind of recalibrates your taste buds when you does. cut all the excess crud out of your diet. It does, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that's, you know, if we come along, you know, people say, oh, I love my meat or I love this or I love that. And, and I really used to like butt heads with people. Yeah. You know, I, I used to be, I was never like the militant vegan, but right. I was definitely a proselytizer. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm like, do whatever you want, yeah. but add sprouts to it. So, and they go, what yeah. do you mean? And I was like, well, you can add sprouts to breakfast, lunch, or dinner, yep. or they could be your breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Right. And you could add them to soup, salads, entrees. You could juice them. You could dry them. You can make them snacks. Yeah. And if you start to add sprouts to salads or to a meal or to a burger, you yeah. won't even taste them. Right. And, but you will feel them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost like you will start to feel them and right. then you will start to feel better. And yeah. then you're going to shift your microbiome and then you're going to want more. Right. So, the, thing, the thing that really sold me, like you said, is there's only a finite amount of whatever nutrient like sulforaphane yeah. within each seed. So it's literally like a multivitamin that you've grown yourself, like a living yeah. multivitamin with just like a concentrated source of like hyper nourishment, like right. mega nutrition. And to think about every seed, every broccoli sprout I'm eating is like a whole head of broccoli worth of nutrition for my right. body that's it, what really like lit the hack. fire for me and got me going again. it's like the food hack we all want hacks right <laughs> this, yeah. this to me seems like the ultimate food hack yeah i mean it's an insight yeah. that you don't need to wait weeks or months or years you don't need to go to the grocery store you don't you know you don't have to wait and even when you go to the grocery store and you're buying vegetables yeah. you have no idea where they came from how long they're on the truck yeah. Whether, you know, wh what, what kind of manure was fertilizing them or the like, the idea that you could get sprouts and seeds that were grown specifically for sprouting, tested for a high germination rate, yeah. and then, you know, like the seeds from Sprout Man or from True Leaf Market or Sprout People, these yeah. people have been selling sprouting seeds, you know, for, for decades plus. Sure. And they have a whole system in place to make sure you're getting seeds that have high germination that will sprout that are tested for pathogens. Yeah. So there's all these reasons um, to do it that the, the idea that you can actually, it's a mind boggling idea, yeah. but the idea that you can take control yeah. of your food destiny uh -huh. um, for, for literally under a dollar serving Right. And you, it, it just takes the mental awareness or the conversation to say, do I want to be programmed yeah. by some corporation that is profiting by having me eating preservatives and additives and GMOs and all these things that yeah. they're putting in fancy packages? To me, if it's advertised, then I'm skeptical. Totally. Right. I know. That was, you know, when I first started to look at why my digestion was so poor before yeah. I went plant based, I was looking for more fiber, but yeah. I would shop the grocery store aisles and 
fiber one cereal there it was in big bold letters right. and then fiber one bars and fiber one yogurt so that was my idea of finding fiber and trying to get my digestion figured out but it, you know it's like it doesn't the real fiber doesn't have a nutrition label on it or no. even a it's not in a package even other than the fruit peel or the the skin on the vegetable right yeah you guys have have you read fiber fueled by dr by dr b no, we just we, listened to his podcast yeah. and it was phenomenal. I mean, I actually was... just also messaged him because we, you know, this is the, the main, Aaron and I do some coaching. We host retreats. We get around people as much as we possibly can. And we're finding that fiber is the real issue. Like you said, mm -hmm. we're over protein, we're under fiber. And so we're now on a new mission and, I, and I'd like to get him on our channel. Yeah. Well, let you know, he's a friend. I'm happy to make the introduction. So email me. I'll make that intro to you guys. That'd be great. Um, so anyway, so I think the, the, the notion is today, right? If I want to leave like parting words with people, yeah, is that, you know, health is a choice. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a choice. And sometimes it's just easier to be comfortable yep. and do the thing. But at some point, being comfortable will lead to being uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Right. Totally. And and but if you were to choose when you were uncomfortable, whether yeah. it's white knuckling or sucking it up or having yeah. one meal a day of sprouts or adding sprouts to it, yeah, the the benefit will pay off like a thousandfold over. Oh, like right. you'll start to feel lighter and fresher, and it's good for the finances. Right. And, and I think that a lot of people are not focusing on how important it is, yeah. right, of to maintain he healthy weight, yeah. right, is not that you want to judge someone and say, oh, you're fat, right? right? And we don't want to shame people for being overweight. Yeah. What we do want to do is make them aware that, that um, being overweight can lead to um, serious health consequences. Sure. That, that obesity can lead to diabetes and sure. heart disease and other things. Yeah. And um, that, that, that you can change. Like if you're worried about, you know, what people think, yeah. you know, that's a whole separate part. And that's where you want to surround yourself in a community of yeah. people who want to be better, who right. want to be healthier. What, what I realized is when I was on my journey that it didn't help for me to talk to other people who weren't on the journey. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 100%. Because like, it's not just preaching to the choir, yeah. it's getting support from people who've gone through the journey, who know, who don't think you're an alien. Like I'm talking to you guys yeah. and I feel like seen, heard, loved, yeah. right? I don't feel like, like I'm an alien. Right. And like you said back in the day, you had easy access to a community in real life living in New York City. Sure. But now we don't have any excuse because the internet is, it's got everything for everyone. You can find your tribe no matter how obscure your interests are. <laughs> right. But you, like you said, you have to be the one to raise your hand or to reach out. We have amassed a big following of new and expecting mothers since having our little boy, Max, who's oh, right sure. over here in his pack and play. So yeah. a, there's a lot of concern around the safety around eating sprouts. And even I get worried sometimes, like, am I doing this right? How do I know they're not moldy or rotten? Yeah, I so, think Jimmy John's had a scare years ago. The sandwich place. The sandwich, yeah. Jimmy John's sandwiches stopped carrying sprouts because they made people sick. And now every time we mention it, that's the question they ask. Aren't they dangerous? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let, let's just say um, there's a book I recommend people read mm -hmm. um, or listen to on Audible, Dr. Michael Greger, How yeah. to Survive a Pandemic. Okay. Right. And yeah. he talks a lot about, you know, food safety. One of the top wellness blogs, um, Wellness Mama. Sure. Right. Sure. So yeah. Katie Wells, um, I interviewed Katie for my book. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm on her podcast. Nice. She, rec you know, she recommends sprouts and broccoli sprouts, etc. Michael Greger says this in the book that when they were swabbing houses, yeah. And they swab the kitchen sink. Yeah. And they swab the toilet. 
yeah. the toilet was safer than the kitchen sink if right. there were animal products in the kitchen sink. Right. I've heard that. Wow. Oh, it's gross. Right. Yeah. And, and so what happens is, you know, when you're in a place where there are contaminants, yeah. right? And I don't know the specifics of the Jimmy John's thing. Right. What, I, what I can tell you is that um, if you buy sprouts yeah. um, or sprouting seeds yeah. from a source that are, are testing for pathogens yeah. and you are sprouting on your own, yeah. right? And the, the number of cases of foodborne illness resulting yeah. from homegrown sprouts, yeah. I, I, I've, I, I have personally never heard of it. Sure. There's never heard of it. But I know people who are getting sick from, from E. coli and salmonella, you know, from meat, dairy, chicken, and those other, um, you know, issues. We live in a society that really throws out the baby, the beautiful baby with the bath water. <laughs> yeah. um, and and we, we need to be very kind of sensitive to the fact that do your homework, look at the cases yeah. and see... Where, where they are, I wouldn't just go to, <clears throat> you know, a local market and buy um, lentils from the bulk bin in the back sure. and, and throw them in the sprouting, you know, container and start sprouting them, yeah. right? Um, even though I, they'd probably be fine, yeah. um, they might not germinate as well. I think if you're getting good sprouting seeds, they're being tested. Like for me, if I were pregnant or my wife were pregnant, <laughs> we, we'd still eat sprouts. That's, you know, our, yeah. our recommendation. I will say is if something smells bad, don't yeah. eat it. Don't the eat nose, it. the nose knows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, the, the nose knows. I definitely. And, you know, you can look, I did a post, you know, on my Instagram um, where I showed root hairs, sure. which actually looked like mold. Yeah, but they That's actually cool. were. I, I did about. see that. I did see your post on Instagram. Yeah, it's interesting. Sprouting is trending. Right. I mean, it it's like unbelievable. Sprouting is trending. Right. And you <laughs> know, we're getting more I, questions about it. We're hearing more about it, which is why we had to have you on our channel. And you're you're an invaluable resource for all of us. So we uh, we we're thankful that you're here uh, to to speak to our followers. We're going to send your book link out. We're going to post your Instagram and we're going to get people coming at you because you are seriously the Sprout Guru. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I, and to me, all this information was out there. Yeah. All I'm doing is applying myself and focusing on, you know, the simple art of, of growing lentils or broccoli right. sprouts. Doug, we could probably talk for an hour or two. We want to find your book and we want to be able, to, uh, our followers to find your book. We'll link everything in the description. We'll but... link anyth everything down below, but how can we find you? Most of my work right now, I'm just using Instagram. Okay. So it's at Doug Evans, D-O-U-G-E-V-A-N-S okay. um, yep. on Instagram. Um, the website, and you can sign up um, for information at The Sprout Book. Dot com. Okay. So I'm doing that. My book is available, you know, pretty much um, most online booksellers have it. If you live in a local, you yeah. know, community, you can call the local bookstore and okay. say, hey, order me a copy, you know, of the book. And right. if you want to support a local bookstore, I'm okay. all for that. I just want to put a, a shout out to uh, Dr. Jed Fahey, okay. um, the, the PhD professor at Johns Hopkins University. Yep. who really discovered that broccoli sprouts have the highest amount of sulforaphane right. and has continued to do the research to, around their chemoprotective properties and sure. the impact that they have on health and wellness. Do you guys have the best day ever? I'm so yeah. grateful that you reached out. I love you guys. I'm so happy that we yes. did this. Thank, Thank you. you so Likewise, much. Doug. We'll My pleasure. Everything out. We'll be in touch. <laughs> okay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.
We hope you enjoyed this video. We had a blast getting to know Doug in person. I think we really need to go stay in his yurt or in one of his Airbnbs on his compound out in the desert. Thanks also to Sproutman for sponsoring this video. They have it all figured out when it comes to quality seeds and sprouting materials. We're gonna include a link and a discount code for you guys. If you like this video, you know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join us here at the Eat Move Rest headquarters. Click that bell to make sure your notifications are turned on. And as always, leave us some love in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and you can follow Dusty and I and Mr. Max daily as we sprout our way to better health on Instagram, at Aaron Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. Until next time, eat, move, sprout your best. Bye guys. You're our little sprout. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.